Morning everyone, nice to see you again. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about the top five console commands that I use on a nearly daily basis. So some of these will really affect the quality of your renders, and some of these are more of a quality of life type of thing. Please excuse me if I look a little bit tired, it's pretty early, bear with me. Let's skip the long intro and jump right in. So before we begin, you may be wondering, how do I open the console command? How do I even get there? How do I change these settings? Um, if, you are, if you're American and you're using an American keyboard, that'll be the tilde key, okay? By opening the menu box at the bottom. Now, if you're like me and most of the world and you're not American, the tilde, there is no tilde key. That's not gonna work. So in order to change that, there's two ways to do this. You can go ahead and change the keyboard shortcut for the console command right here. If you go to edit, editor preferences, keyboard shortcuts right here, and search for console command. So I've already remapped this key to the one that I want. Feel free to set this to something that you like. Now, another way of opening the console command menu, and this is the way that we're gonna be using it in this tutorial, and that's by going to Window, Developer Tools, and Output Log. That opens up a new window down here, pretty useful. So the first console command that I'm gonna talk about is gonna be the r.temporalaa.upsampling0. I've already covered that in this video up here. I just wanted to get it out of the way. I still think it's worth mentioning in this video because of just how important it is. It can completely, dramatically improve the quality of your depth of field. Now, a little disclaimer here, depending on which version of Unreal and which template of Unreal you're using, this console command may already be activated by default, okay? So in some projects, it's already enabled by default, some it is not. So if you, you, know, you try this console command and nothing happens, then that's a good thing. It means you don't need to go ahead and manually activate this every single time you start the engine, okay? That brings me to my next point. How do you know what the default setting of a given console command is? And that's with the question mark, okay? So let, let's just do a little example here. So let's say, for example, I'm going to use the r.temporalaa.upsampling0, upsampling console command, and I'm gonna hit question mark. Instead of zero, I'm gonna hit question mark. And now you'll see temporal AA upsampling equals zero, last set by constructor. But it also tells you, it gives you a small description of what the console command does. So if you, you try to console command A, you have no idea what it's doing. Using the question mark will tell you a bit more information about it. So let's say I'm going to grab a random one. So r dot uh, ray trace, ray trace ambient occlusion. Okay. I'm going to hit question mark. What did that do? So when I use a question mark, it tells me what its values are, what its value is currently set to, it tells me what my options are, and it tells you what it's set by. So last set by constructor. That means I didn't touch it, it wasn't me. If this was a value that I had changed, okay, let's say uh, I'm gonna set this to one, okay? And I'm gonna hit question mark a second time. It'll say last set by console, okay? So that means that when it says last set by console, it means that I was the one who changed it. So this is a great way of figuring out like, oh shit, did I change something? Did I break this? Did I make a, a change to the, these values? This is how you find out. So the question mark is super handy for figuring out what things do, what your options are, and who set the console variable last. Now the next one I wanna talk about is r.screen percentage, okay? Now, this is a setting that most people will change in the post-process volume. So if I go ahead and add a post-process volume and I search for a screen percentage, usually people set this up here in the post-process volume. Personally, I never set that. I don't like changing render settings that will affect my entire scene in all the renders. Now, what does screen percentage do exactly? Screen percentage will is basically the resolution at which your scene will be rendered at. So if your screen percentage is set to 100 and you're rendering in HD, it's going to render a full HD 1920 by 1080 p shot, okay? Now, if I were to set the screen percentage to 200, it's going to it's still gonna render a 1080p frame, but it's gonna render the whole scene in 4K and down sample. So you're gonna get what we call super sampling and the results are that much better. It is day and night. Super sampling is immensely powerful, but it's a lot more demanding on your graphics card. Okay, so not all graphic cards can render in full 4K. Even though the output is actually still an HD image, it still has to render everything in 4K and then down sample, down res. That being said, 
most people change this value in the post process volume. I don't like doing that because I like having everything that I do, all my render settings in the movie render queue. So I prefer having the screen percentage settings set to 100 in my movie render queue console variables tab. Okay, right here. The reason for that is what I'm doing with text renders, and I'm just trying to get to see if my lighting is okay. I send it to a colorist or I send it to the compers. I want to get an idea of what the frames are and I want some fast renders. At the end of the production, when I'm ready to spit out the final images, then and only then will I crank this up to 200. Or, you know, if my graphic card can't handle it, I'll do it 150. Never before. So this is why I don't really set my rent, my screen percentage settings in the post process volume because it's way too easy to forget about it and wonder why your renders are crashing all the time. This way, when I have it in the movie render queue settings, it's easy to see and it's easier to turn off and adjust quickly. Now this next console command is really going to appeal to the photographers out there. And that console command is show flag dot visualize HDR one. And that is the only way to show any kind of histogram in Unreal. Those of you who are photographers will feel right at home seeing this histogram. It is a great way of visualizing the highlights and the shadows of your scene and generally the midtones and seeing like which part of your scene is a little bit overexposed, which one's a little bit underexposed. Um, this is a fantastic little way of figuring out, getting, generally getting a, a nice feel for your scene. And if you want to turn this off, you just set that back to zero and call it a day. All right, so you open that console command. Instead of one, you use zero. Now this next console command is not something I use that often, but sometimes I need to cap my frame rate or unlock my frame rates. What you can do is you can type T dot max FPS and the value will be whatever you want your max frame rate to be. So for example, I'm going to set this to 30. So now if I show my frame rate, it's capped at 30 frames per second. If I wanted to cap it to 60, it'll be capped at 60. As you can see, it never goes above 60. Now, my graphic card is not that powerful. I'm just using an RTX 2060 Super. So if I set this to, you know, 300, uh, it's not gonna make any difference because my I can't run the scene in 300 FPS. So this is a useful little tool if you wanna, you know, if you wanna unlock your frame rate for whatever reason, because I think by default that's set to 120 frames per second. I don't see a practical reason for unlocking it higher than that, but if you have the need to, now you know how. Okay, so this last console command here has to do with foliage. Now, anyone who's ever used the foliage as of 4.26 may have noticed that the shadows in your foliage just disappear. They're gone, never to be seen again. And there doesn't seem to be any way of getting them back. Now, pay attention to the grass here in the foreground and the trees in the background here, right? Over here. Everything's kind of like washed out. There's no shadow, there's no detail in there. And I couldn't figure out why until I figured out this console command. And this console command is a bit of a tongue twister, so bear with me. It is called r.raytracing.geometry.instantstaticmeshes.culling0. It's long, I know. But bear with me and let's see how this looks, okay? So, so pay attention to the grass, especially in the foreground area right here. And now we have shadows again. The difference is just day and night. Look at the trees in the background. Suddenly now they all have detail and shadows. Okay, so this is probably a game's optimization. This very well may depend on which template of Unreal you use. If you, so if you use the game's template or the film template, your results may vary. You may not need this, but in the event that you notice your foliage shadows looking really bad and they just fade away, this console command will fix that. So I hope that helps you out. So before we take off here, I want to hear from you. What are some of your favorite console commands? What are some console commands that have really improved the quality of your render? I want to hear from you. So leave a comment down below. And just like that, as always, guys, I really hope this has helped you out. I really hope you learned a little something today. I really hope that one of these console commands does help you in some way. Hit that like button if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next week.